check-in is a, um, a real amazing tool that I use. And I, I picked up on a, on a men's retreat once uh, where you basically check in with yourself or with a partner or with a group of men or you journal with a check-in. And it's three words. You say three words that best represent how you feel in the moment. Don't be too scared. It's fine. And then you explain how you feel. And then you just kind of, the best thing about it is that the other person can't jump in and say, oh, I tell you what you should do for those feelings. Nobody can fix you, which is the nice part. So the three words, do they all, are they all descriptive? Yeah. It's not like I feel and then the... No, no, no. So it's, you can just say I'm tired. Oh, I'm, I'm trying... I'm tired trying, of being asked the same question. I'm trying, no, no, no. I'm, I'm trying to pad out the three words with... <laughs> Uh, um, it can be anything you want. There's no judgment, nothing. It's, 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 but I, I kind of like the idea of what it does. It's, it centers you, it makes you present. And if you know how you feel, then you can access some of the tools you have to, to help you feel a different way, to plan your day, or, or just know. You know, I, like, for me, for 36 years of my entire life, I had no idea how I felt. I agree. I want to feel like that. And then you get it, like, I still feel weird. I'm, you know? I'm the same. I have been the same. I think I never knew what... I think a lot of people don't know how important it is to check in. Mm. Because I think you become more present, don't you? Yeah. So I think I do it quite a bit on my own. I... Well, what are my three words today? So I'm feeling aware. So I'm, I, I, I do regularly check in, so I'm quite happy with... I'm aware of my emotions at any given moment. Sometimes I have to check myself. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling fuzzy because I did actually, for the first time in a long time, have a couple of drinks last night, which has made me feel a little bit annoyed. Oh, okay. Yeah, I feel like I've let myself down a bit. Oh. It's funny because uh, my missus says, just, what, just let it go, you're allowed to enjoy yourself. And I'm like, I get it, but I've done so well. <laughs> <laughs> And, the, and this, I, tra I trained this morning and it started off a little bit sketchy. Okay. Well, at least you trained. I did, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's your three words. What were they? Um, aware, aware, fuzzy. Fuzzy and a bit annoyed with yourself. Yeah, they're all... Uh, apart because... from one, they're a little bit negative. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, it depends what you value as negative. I mean, it's just... I think... Annoyed uh, is negative, I'd say. Well, I don't know, because at least you're aware that the whole point of, I think, a check-in is that regardless of the feeling, you're aware of what you feel. I mean, and that comes and goes. And I suppose also the way we feel can be... It's up to us how it is, whether it's positive or negative. And I, ideally, I always try and tell people and myself to spin everything into a positive. So the annoyed thing is actually a positive because it means that I've... I'm aware of doing something that I feel a little bit angry. So, interestingly, and this is not me trying to fix, the other week I did this, I, everything was going great. All the work stuff, and I got a little excited with all that adrenaline and emotion, and I got absolutely shit-faced on my own, completely on my own. And I woke <laughs> up and I was like, oh no. I spoke to my therapist, she's on like speed dial, <laughs> <laughs> for those moments. And, and, I, and, I, and I was like, Do you know what, I, I, I really let myself down. And she was like, hey Matt, we all need these moments to remind us of what not to do. Mm. Otherwise, you're coasting through and everything's fine. And, 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 and I, I need to have a reminder of, like, yeah, I don't want to be fuzzy. It was a Sunday night drinking session as well. So I started the week off wrong. And I know now not to drink on my own. Uh, that's probably a bad idea. And maybe not do it on a Sunday night when you've got stuff to do the next day. That's exactly what I've just do done. You know, <laughs> and, and do you know what? And, and do you know what? It's fine. You just need a reminder every now and then. And that, I, find, I find that really interesting. But also... I don't believe there's a negative check-in ever because it's just authentic. And I, thought, I think authenticity is kind of the way to go. And you can't always be on a high anyway. Cause it's, I it's, find that impossible. Yeah, and it's also not, well, it's not good anyway. I can't imagine it's good for you. Is that something? Because I, um, I've got a couple of mates, ex-military, and it's a thing. Try and turn this into a positive. Just change the language around this. Is that something that you would have picked up? Yeah, uh, I've, I've, I've actually looked back and studied it. Not studied it like an academic. I've studied it. <laughs> I had a I've think had a about it. About yeah, it. yeah. And uh, I, so I'll, I'll 
I'll make reference to my background because that's how I learned it, and that was joining the Marines. And they, from the minute you walk through the gates at the training establishment, which is down in um, the southwest, down in Devon, nice place. Mm-hmm. But when you walk through the gates, they, without, you don't know it, it's all subconscious, unless you actually do what I do and look back on it, which a lot of lads do. But, um, and lasses, because it's uh, for everyone now. But um, they start to change your internal culture and, and they, they try to make you a more robust individual. By, have, by, by making you adopt a culture, and the culture they call it down there in the Marines is called the commando spirit. It's made right. up of four, there's four pillars. Okay. So there's one's, one is um, courage, which is not about storming machine gun nests. It's about having the courage to push yourself out of your comfort zone, mm-hmm. which you do on a regular basis at that place. The next one is determination, which is about having the, grit and desire to stick with it even when it's hard when you've pushed yourself out your comfort zone and then the third one is the one that we're talking about is cheerfulness in the face of adversity okay but it is it yes i think it does mean to have a laugh and like (laughs) and like find the dark humor in everything but i think what it actually means is to always find the silver lining to Mm. have you know in the face of adversity be cheerful, be positive, because ultimately you find yourself, when you do that job, you find yourself into some, you, you end up finding yourself in some pretty horrendous situations. And if you didn't try and turn it into a positive, you would not last two seconds. You'd that, end up dying. That makes sense to me. Yeah. So in, in those scenarios, because the, the entire exploration recently that I've been through is that kind of toxic positivity. Yeah. So you learn the opposite of that. It's like you can't be like, hey, I, I know, I know your, 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 your father used to beat you up, but hey, come on, let's try and think positive. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you can't do it. It's like there's a certain like good vibes only. Mm. And I think in, in certain scenarios that doesn't work, that kind of mentality. But if you're behind enemy lines and you're stuck on your own and you have no backup or anything or whatever the scenario is, that is probably a really good option for you to have that mentality. Yeah, the wording in things is so important, like cheerfulness in the face of adversity. It's, you're not denying it's there. Yes. You know it's there. It's like, right, hang on a minute. There's a pretty shitty situation we're in here, but how do we get out of it? Like, like anything, there's lots of different levels to it, isn't it? I think because uh, there's this one brilliant guy, David Goggins, you know, and then you have the like, people who are softer on that kind of wellness curve who are like, hey, it's all right to have a bad day. If you're feeling mm. unwell, get into it. Call your, call your boss, have a day off. Just watch films and eat ice cream all day, which is the opposite. It, everything comes with a caveat, doesn't it? And, yeah. and certain layers. But I, I do find that interesting, how that kind of, because that would have been drilled into you as well, that attitude. It, it, yeah. Do, do you know what? It's... Everywhere you look, there's like, there's a huge gymnasium in that establishment and there's corridors in office blocks, that sort of thing. Mm. No matter where you go, there is always some form of imagery that has got courage, determination, cheerfulness in the face of adversity. Unselfishness is the other one. Unselfishness. Look out for all your other mates, basically, before yourself. Which sounds odd to begin with, but it's a shame more of us don't adopt that because there's a lot of empowerment that comes with it. Mm. If you are looking out for everyone, at first you're like, oh, hang on a minute, what about me? <laughs> but then you're like, ah, hang on, no, I've got all these lot looking out for me. Yeah. So I should be looking out for them. It's, it's, it's an incredible thing. It's one of those things that I've always weirdly had an affinity with, the forces. Mm. It's, for some reason, all of the attitude, all of that kind of... Um, strength and all that type of stuff. I've always felt like there's been a drag for me. Like I didn't do it, obviously, and all that. My dad was big into it. He was a police officer and all that type of stuff. And his dad was a big hard guy. And I just, it just feels like it's not too far away. And it, that type of attitude would have suited my personality to a certain point. Mm. But I went off in a different direction. I went into media and nearly killed myself. Good. Well, I was going to say good job. Yeah, no, <laughs> the military's just it's, as... Yeah, it's stressful. But like, it, it feels like some people need that discipline and that, that kind of education in that world. And to, to kind of further on what I'm going to say is like, what, 
all those lessons that you have learned and all those skills and all that kind of mechanisms in your mind, how can other people in the real world adopt some of those principles to kind of not be in the situation where I was, living a life that I didn't really necessarily want to live, ending up trying to take my own life. Is there something that people can take from the forces? I think so. I need, I, I need, I was in the same position as you though. You know, I've been in a situation where I was leading a life I didn't want to lead and I nearly, you know, I stood on top of a cliff. I'd say reasonably close to jumping off it. I think it was just, I think that was me needing, I needed to do that physically to then have the presence of mind to check in yeah. and suddenly remind myself of all the things that I'd learned in the military and just overlay them from that into everyday life. But yeah, I think so. The thing is, I've just spieled off four pillars of a way of living, mm. which anyone can adopt, but it's not that easy, is it? No. You need to have a little bit of the determination to implement it. Mm. You've got to keep going over it in your mind, saying, "Right, I need to have, I need to be cheerful in the face of adversity." <laughs> Not quite like that, but yeah. ultimately, the best way to do it, I think, is to is to first of all do things consciously, which is what takes a lot of hard work. So yeah. the more you're like, oh, I feel, you know, instead of waking up in the morning feeling shit. And being like, oh, I haven't got time, I've got fucking hell, I've got too much to do, running around, have a quick shower, whatever, rush out the door, sweating your balls nice off. Stuff. Yeah. And still in a bad mood, having not checked in. Whereas if you give yourself, have the discipline to wake up, let's say you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, fucking hell, I feel a bit shit. What's going on here? And instead of rushing into the day head first, you take a couple of seconds or 10 minutes, depending mm. on how long you got to yeah. at least explore your emotion. Yeah. And then that means that you're aware of it. It might not mean you've fixed it, but you already feel a lot better because you've already actually given yourself a bit of time. I've done it for years where I don't check in. Mm. I just rush into things. I'm a bad person to be around. I'm miserable, arguing. And, and yet, mm. if you just took that time, and I make a point of doing it, sometimes it happens subconsciously now because I've done it so many times. But other times, I still have to... You know, if if I get that sort of knowing feeling of like, I don't know what it is. It could be anything. It could, in fact, it could be anything. Mm. It doesn't necessarily it doesn't have, have to, to be, be one specific thing. No, no, it could be a fear thing. You know, yeah. I'm in a position where I can, and then, you know, I know fear. I'm like, fucking you know, I don't like that. And then mm. I'm like, oh, hang on a minute, right? Why, why, why do I feel like this? Oh, right, that's right. I'm stood on the edge of a fucking cliff, and I'm about to do something mad. Yeah. So instead of being a snotty heap on the floor where I don't get to perform and do what I need to do. I just check in with myself and my like, right, uh, I need to make sure I'm doing, doing the right thing with my kit. I've got all that, everything's in the right, okay, yeah. cool. So I sort of do that. Whereas the other ones are like, if I feel angry at something or, or stressed, I'll check in and after time, I'll be able to work that out pretty quickly. It's yeah. either, I've had an argument, which means, okay, I'm allowed to feel a little bit angry. Don't let it get out of control. <laughs> yeah. Or it could be that, you know, I'm stressed because I've got a bill looming. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and, oh, yeah, that's why I'm stressed. That makes, oh, that makes sense. You know what, I'll go and pay it. Don't want to, but I'll pay it and it's done. It's that presence of mind. And you, you hit the nail on the head there. Really interesting. The moment where I found myself on a balcony, um, the, the, I still, for 11 years now, I've tried to work out what stopped me? Because I still don't really know. Mm. But all I remember is that I was, sh I was shit faced for a few days, maybe weeks before that. But I was sober in that moment. In the mm. moment when I had that control and I could feel that I'm doing something, this is electrifying, was the moment I went, oh, this is what it feels like to be. I didn't know what it was then, but now it's total presence. And, that, and I've been chasing that ever since, like a complete clarity of, who I was, how I felt, and what I wanted. And it passed within a nanosecond, but it was for the first time. For, that was when I was 28. So for 28 years, I've been drifting, just trying, punching in, punching out, sub, uh, subconsciously and consciously suppressing my feelings towards anything and just like 100 miles an hour forward. You think, you think that's why you got to that suicidal place? I think, yeah. Because I, you weren't? Didn't know who I was, probably. I think I might have been the same. What I like to do is, if I, if I journal and I check in with something shitty, 
Um, I've got a bunch of tools now that I've picked up probably over the last 10 years and specifically over the last five years where I've gone off and I've gone, oh, that's a nice little trick. That's an interesting thing. Uh, like um, cold water therapy and stuff. What yeah. would you, what's, what's you, what are you using at the moment as a matter of a mental health tool for yourself? As a form of prevention or whatever? Um, I think at the moment what is massively squaring me away is a routine. But not having it in my head that if I can't stick to the routine, then I'll go into a flat spin. Mm. I'm just like, okay, the routine's had a, it's, had, it's been impacted, but well, how do I reinstigate it? What can I do in whatever area I'm in to keep that routine in place? And what's that, sleeping patterns and...? Sleep, um, cold water. Really? Keeps me in, in, in check. Early mornings are unbelievable. I've started to have early early nights, early mornings. Really? And that has really, well, getting really, up early in the morning. Yeah, really squared me away. Cold shower. So up, cold shower, um, do whatever I need to do, cup of coffee, okay. whatever, then get in a training session early. If it means I have to get up a bit earlier, then I'll do it. Really? And it is, Are you, you're in bed then the same time every night or depending? Just but no later than... I'm, I, I try, sound like a real square. I, <laughs> no, try, not at all. I try to get in bed by 10. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And it was difficult to begin with because I'm quite a night owl. Yeah. And I love to stay up watching stuff, reading stuff, drinking wine. Yeah, same. Until a very, very late hour. That's really interesting. But I've, I've, forced, I've forced the change and now it's easy. I tell you where I forced it actually, and it was easier to implement there was when I was in quarantine in Australia. Because you had to. Not because I had to, because I did one last year. Yeah. And I didn't have a very good routine. I was ordering in booze <laughs> to the to the hotel, Whoa. get the concierge up, and I was just boshing that, watching. Sport. We could be very similar. So what happens when it starts getting dark? My mind starts getting yeah. a bit. Yeah. Well, I don't know what it is. I start. Imagining things, it's, my, it's a good time, it feels like mm. a creative time, mm. but I do not want to go to bed. It just get, becomes more exciting. Do you find yourself in the day, do you, you're like, oh, God, I feel tired. Yeah. And then it gets dark, you're like, ah, oh, ding! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I've had that. Yeah. Easy. I've, I've changed it. And you, because I'm, I'm at that stage now where I'm, I'm trying to get up early, so I feel tired enough in the evening, and it works That's for a few happened. days. And, and then I could easily stick a film on at 12. Mm. Easy. I have forced it, forced it, forced it, forced it. And when I first, when I was like, right, I've had enough of drinking lots and drinking late. Yeah. When I first stopped that, I found it really difficult to sleep, but I kept, I just stuck with it. And then eventually cold showers as well. Just before going to bed? Yeah. Eventually it did start to, it start, my body was starting to, yeah. it was, uh, what's it called? It conditions itself. Yeah. And then once it happens, I, it's it's an easy thing. And, and what about consistency? Because I, I can do that for two weeks and then if I feel like I'm going to fall off a pedestal or something. I feel, like I feel too good. I need to, like I did, like I was telling you about, like I, I did a couple of weeks ago, everything was going well. I was like, let's get absolutely wankered on your own. That's the old, uh, that's, that's, that's that red button, morning. isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> everything's going right. <laughs> Sabotage! Yeah, yeah. You know? I've taped that bad boy up. Do you know what I, I, used, in... I used to press it a lot. I learned that that self-sabotage or uh, whatever it is, is a form, it's your security safety measure going, don't try too hard or you fail. And then that's catastrophic for me anyway. So if, if I was, say for example, this project now, um, there's a great, there's, a, there's an opportunity for people to go, that's a pile of shit. Let's never watch that ever again. Mm. And then it's a failure. So in the week in the build up to this, genuinely, this is the truth, uh, my body's gone, oh, I'll get shit faced. Just forget about that feeling of nervousness and fear because what you'll do is you ruin it and then you won't do it. And then if you don't do it, it's not gonna fail. <laughs> That's my inner body, the inner mind or wherever it is saying, don't do it because you'll get hurt. So I, I've, I've, I've embraced failure. <laughs> But also, I will not set myself up. To, there's ways of not setting yourself up to fail. So with the whole, this what I'm doing, my my routine, mm. it could easily fall apart. Yes. I'm uh, by me. Yeah. But what I'm doing is I'm not. In my mind, I'm saying, it doesn't matter if it falls apart. 
it doesn't matter if you don't do this, if you don't do that. And then when the option comes to not do that, I'm like, ah, well, I've not told myself categorically that, I, as an example, I'm not going to drink. Because that I am setting myself up to fail there. To fail, yeah. 100%, Absolutely. like I'm just that is it. Yeah. But what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to dabble with it. Yeah. I'm not going to say no. It's yeah. the same with the cold showers. I'm like, I'm not going to say that I have to have a cold shower, but... And it's got to the point now where I'm too far down the line. I actually feel, and there are times when I don't have a cold shower, which is fine, but I feel like I've cheated. And I'm like, oh, I'm like I feel like I've cheated there. I mean, it's great, but I'm going to go back to a cold shower in a minute. That's very good advice. That's exactly what my therapist said. Is it? Yeah, totally, exactly it. She was like, what if you do fail? Fine, you always, everything always works out. You know, you've tried. It's a less, everything's a lesson. You know, it's like, well, oh, oh yeah, of course, yeah. If, if that, everything will work out. And the more I set it up as this grand, this has got to work, the more I'm going to set myself up to fail. Because even if it doesn't work to that standard, you might see it as a failure. But I think, again, with everything, once you get past the tipping point, it's then, then I think it's easy. You know, if you keep not worrying about something. Mm. I still do it for the missus. I'm like, it's not fucking worrying. Yeah. She's like, it's easy enough to be said, isn't it? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, well, it's easy enough to do as well. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. That's the whole presence thing, which is why... Have you tried meditation as well? Not okay. really. I don't really know how I'd... Embr- I don't know how I'd do with that. I do take time to think about things. I'm not too sure. I, I have done stuff using my phone and an app. Yeah. Like, but um, some of them calm or something. Yeah, but some of them sort of I feel like they're a little bit. I don't know. You can say wishy washy. Some, I don't know whether they're wishy washy. Sometimes I feel awkward doing them. Oh, okay. There's one. There's a breathe one. Someone, dance like singing in my head, <laughs> and I'm like, shut the fuck up. You're doing, <laughs> you're doing my head in, let alone me breathing. <laughs> so I just go and do my own sort of breathing technique. Yeah. But then. The meditation thing, I've not really done it. But I don't know whether I... Because I do my own sort of mindfulness. Maybe that is meditation. Well, even like that you train, don't you? So that is possibly a form of meditation. Like I, if I cycle through London, A, I'm concentrating on the road and not getting hit by a bus. Which so is... I'm there present. And I'm, you know, you breathe in your exercises. So that's a, for me a form of meditation. The, the idea of... Like, I've done it lots of times, and I kind of, I do try lots of kind of that woo-woo stuff, and I've sat in many places with many people uh, with all the yoga and meditation stuff, and I kind of, I don't mind it, because it's the exact opposite of where I'm from. So it feels like a nice, safe, pink bubble. Um, But somewhere in the middle is where I kind of, I enjoy that space and that time. So, for example, if... Boxing on a punch bag, meditative. You're present, you're in the moment. You, yeah. you really have to check in on your breathing. That feels like it's meditative. But people, it's not like necessarily sitting down with the bells chiming, with birds <laughs> tweeting. Because it's not what I'm used to. It would like balls at the moment. But I kind of like all that at the same time. I'm not weird, f- <laughs> <laughs> you know? jiggling balls. <laughs> what, which, where have you been? Well, I don't know. What retreats is that? I don't know where I came back from. But um... <laughs> do you know what? For now you've mentioned it. I uh, so in November last year, I injured my back, and um, to the point where it was reasonably not bad. Mm. I feel a bit, bit fraudulent to say it was bad, but for me, you know, everything's you know got its own perspective but for me it was quite bad I, you know I injured it the following morning it took me 20 minutes to get out of bed all sorts of things and I had to go and see a chiropractor and all that sort of thing anyway because of that I take very seriously my morning work like warm up slash mobility workout okay. which I do all the time Yeah. and it's just moving stretching that sort the of thing flow. yeah good, and so, yeah. that I really enjoy it because yeah. I'm just in the moment yeah. Concentrating on my own body. And I don't know whether that's meditation. Well, no, it is. It's, it's, it's a form of getting in touch with your body, grounding and all that type of stuff. And this, this is what I find really interesting. It's how you dress it up. Yeah. Because how, how are we, we going to get men out there who are struggling uh, to do these certain things when you only have a picture in your mind of ping pong, ping 
and you know proper Eastern style of um, meditation and, and wellness and stuff. But in, like you were saying, just stretching out your muscles five, ten minutes in the morning and having a flow, getting the blood pumping, is effectively yoga, but like a small yeah. version of that. Yeah. You know? I will. I mean, I wouldn't use the word yoga. But, um. <laughs> but no, it's a it's a no, form it of whatever, the, whatever the purpose of yoga and meditation is. Like, you know, when somebody like would say, just take a deep breath, and you know, it's, it's a form of meditation. Like I do it all the time. If I'm in a sticky situation and feel a bit, you know, even anxious in in social situations, like before, I'd have to drink a lot. Like now, I just breathe and just get present, and mm-hmm. I'm all right. Like any feeling, any trigger, I believe, is you can't really hide. You, is is that from your past is still there but how you react to it is something that you can control because everyone's like oh I can't be, you know, I'm not uh, hang on a minute it's your feeling mm. it's up to you what you do with it yeah you know what I mean but a lot of people allow the feeling to control them instead of taking that proverbial 10 seconds to sort of assess the situation and then be like right this is how I'm going to deal with it I was going to ask you about Afghanistan if you don't mind of course um, how do you feel about what's happening recently? I know you've been very vocal on Instagram, especially. So, when it when it first started to, when this debacle started to materialise, probably about two weeks ago, I was like, ah, "What the fuck?" Hmm. I was like, "This is a weird position to be in," and I should imagine it's a, not dissimilar to Vietnam vets, mm-hmm. where, I mean, that was a very very. Um, there was, it was very, it created a lot of polarization within communities, didn't it? That that war, yeah. as much as we're aware, I'm, I, you know, it yeah. happened long before I was about, not that long, but but this one, um, I started to get, I went through the period of being a bit like feeling empty, and then I was like, hang on a minute, what's happening now? I have got absolutely no control over. I can hold my hand up and say, I acted to the best of my ability in what was morally the right way, and I did it for these reasons, and nothing can take away from that. And that's why I put up a post, because I knew that there was other people out there, veterans predominantly, being like, fuck me, what was that all for? I feel yeah. I feel pissed off, angry, I'm upset, I'm crying, I had blokes telling me that. And I was like, hang on a minute, you know, if you can put your hand on your heart and say, I did everything to the best of my ability and I acted in a way that is morally sound, nothing can take away from that. Yeah. Whether, you know. I bet that you would have made relationships with people out there, you would have yeah. you know, you helped children out there and yeah. to see the scenes of people. Yeah, I'm in communication with a few people and there's people asking me to, all I can do, you do feel useless, but all I can do is like bang on about a bit about it a bit on social media, which is a great tool in these sort of times. Yeah. Um, but it is you know, hard work to listen to. There's there's a group of girls I went and did some work with a couple of years ago called they're called Afghan Ascend or Ascend Afghan. And it's an NGO that empowered young girls in Afghanistan to get out, enjoy the outdoors and learn how to mountaineer. And they've had some really good success stories within that group. And they are fucking in a flat spin in the middle. Oh, I can't imagine. It's, it's, isn't it dreadful? Yeah. Sad. Just, it is really awful. But I just, it's mad. Like, I put a thing up the other day saying, get, try and get your head around this about there's, an, there's a movement that now runs a country that have predom- base, not predominantly, but basically got a, a rule that outlaws women enjoying the great outdoors. Mm. That's fucking bonkers, isn't it? Yeah. In the 21st century. And especially, well, it's been such a long time since you guys were there instigating and, 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 and creating these opportunities for women and, and, and men as well. These people would have been young at that time. They've grown up to be young women, successful young women and, and, and professionals in their own right. And now they're burning their diplomas and, and well, no, uh, that's fucking worried about their, their safety. And that, that's, to, regardless of the political stance on it, he, he, as a human being, seeing that scene unfold for you, I mean, that's a heavy thing to kind of witness, I'm sure. Yeah, it is. Just it makes, it makes you realise that the world is chaotic. I want to close things off, if I may, with a one-word checkout. Uh, how do you feel right now? Very happy. Nice one. That's more than one word, happy. Happy is a good word. 
been good to check in and the byproduct of it is I'm happy. Good one. Thank you very much. I'm going to check out with... Sad. No, I'm going to... <laughs> Um, relieved. I am relieved. Oh. I'm relieved. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's been a long time coming. Lockdown to get yeah. this done. It's, it's nice. It's a nice sense of, well, I don't know. I'm going to change relieved to achievement. I feel very happy. I've got you sat down. We've had a really nice chat. Feel good about it. No, it's been awesome. Thank you very much Appreciate for coming it. on. Cheers. Thanks, Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Let's go next door and get a shit face. <laughs>